Well, Wizards of the Coast uh, came out with their 50th year edition of Dungeons and Dragons synopsis or movie or documentary style uh, YouTube video that came out. There's a book coming out for this and there's a lot of key things in there where they go over some of the early works that Gygax did with the game and all these other things. But it's marred and it's been taken uh, a, a very dark tone because apparently they were way too racist back when they made the game as per Wizards of the Coast and the interview that goes on between Jason Tondoro and Todd Kenrick. Now this popped up from uh, Structured Dog Beef is what he goes by on Twitter. He's uh, someone that just happens to be a private investigator it seems. But this stuff with the uh, Dungeons and Dragons, this, this clip that he's put up here, it's from a longer video that Wizards of the Coast put up called How Dungeons and Dragons Started. There's a lot of unique stuff in here. They show off some documents that haven't really been seen before. Uh, you can see what I'm getting here with the, the plugin. Uh, you know, a lot of people are panning it and it's mostly because of the clip that you see here. Um, with the, the situation. Now, before I get into it, before I talk about the clip, before I talk about the article I have to show here, like and subscribe to the channel today. Uh, I, I've covered a lot of Wizards of the Coast debacles, a lot of Hasbro situation, and how they've gone down this rabbit hole and just cannot climb themselves out of it. And it's, uh, it's important that this is a historical document. So there are yeah. things, it was a different time. So we've had an inclusivity review of all these materials. Multiple. So let's... Okay, so inclusivity uh, review of all the old school material. They hired on a whole team of sensitivity readers through the their system. Um, they've actually partnered with Take This, which is the people that put out the article defending uh, Sweet Baby Inc., so this is another thing, another thing to throw into the pot, but Wizards of the Coast has been doing this for some time. Uh, they even have disclaimers on their old school stuff, which is actually on this new product. Let's take a step back here. Let's clarify. There are materials in original Dungeons and Dragons that would never pass. Yeah. Okay, how about this? How about this? Quit being the mummy and daddies of the tabletop gaming space. Let, let us decide, let the market decide, let the gamers decide if they're going to play your game. Right now, I'd rather go play first edition Pathfinder than even touch a Dungeons Dragons book again. It, it's absolutely ridiculous that it comes down to that they have to be the arbiters to tell me what my imagination is going to do. Our inclusivity reviews today. Uh, and a lot of it is, you can, some of it you can understand, like, okay, these are a bunch of war gamers, and they're using armies. Yeah, okay, so everything for Dungeons and Dragons and Tolkien's works back with uh, Lord of the Rings stemmed from the World Wars. Um, so they, it was Tolkien's telling of the World Wars, um, and then it was also to honor his fallen comrades that had fallen in the line of battle against uh, the World War II bad guys. It's absolutely ridiculous that now we're talking about this stuff almost 100 years later from that situation, that absolute horrific war that took so many people's lives and has helped turned and shaped history today. And this, once again, is Wizards of the Coast trying to rewrite history in the modern day. From history, and so when they create a warrior class yeah. for Dungeons and Dragons, they call it the fighting man, because that's what they were used to, and they were all men, they were all white dudes from Lake Geneva and the Twin Cities. Okay, okay. They were all white dudes because you could see the cringe in his face, him having to say this. I honestly do believe this was something that they had to shoehorn into this interview much later on in the interview because this starts at about the 35 minute mark in this interview that they start talking about this. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? Like right. there's a lot of material in this book and I won't go over all of it. 
but it would not pass our inclusivity reviews today. Once again, quit being the arbiters of what I can and cannot like. Well, we couldn't change it. It's, it's history. What we can do is acknowledge it and show how far we've come. Okay, and that's where we go with this. From Bounding Into Comics, they, they talk about this. Dungeons & Dragons senior game designer disavows how series, how series was made by white dudes, boasts that much of the original material would never pass our inclusivity reviews today. And it's absolutely ridiculous. And down here at the bottom of their article, they actually have the synopsis with the disclaimer added to the book. Disclaimer, we wizards recognize that some of the legacy content in this product does not reflect the values of Dungeons & Dragons franchise today. Some older content may reflect ethnic, racial, and gender prejudices that were commonplace in American society at the time. These depictions were wrong then and are wrong today. This content is presented as it originally was created the, uh, because... To do otherwise would be the exact would be the same thing as claiming as these prejudices never existed. Dungeons and Dragons teaches us that diversity is a strength, and we strive to make our D and D products as welcoming and inclusive as possible. This part of our work will never end, and this is starting to become a mantra when it comes to old school content. I don't think there was ever a problem with the original Dungeons & Dragons books. Um, I think uh, it, it was fine on the surface uh, and it never needed a disclaimer like this. It never needed something like this. This is like saying, yeah, the war was horrible. Uh, these were horrible depictions and a lot of people lost their lives. Uh, it, it happened, but advert your eyes. Don't Don't pay attention to it and don't learn about it. Um, no, if you want to actually go down the path and do a true research and actually learn about the uh, Dungeons and Dragons history, Lord of the Rings history, how fantasy as a genre did a lot of things, Dungeon, uh, Wizards of the Coast does not seem to be the arbiter or the good gatekeepers of this product. It's turned out that there's thousands of other people making their own content when it comes to Dungeons and Dragons, especially when we went through the open gaming license debacle uh, over the situation where they didn't, were trying to demand to get royalties on the product, and it never could be that way. That's not how this works. These, these legacy things that they want to put in here, let the market decide, let the people decide, and quit trying to be the arbiters. Wizards of the Coast, you don't need to do this. This is, this is extra work for what? What do you get out of this? Do you get increased sales? No. Do you get more people coming to the game? No, because the people the people that were already playing the game were already playing the game and would continue playing the game, but are going to play a different version of the game because they don't need your rule set anymore. They don't need your advice anymore because it's now become an open gaming license because you put it onto the commonplace. And... That's where the rest of us are going to go and try and play this game. As for today, I'm not, I don't think I'm ever buying another Wizards of the Coast product at this point. They're too deep into their, into, with a stick up their ass right now to actually see that the 3.3 billion gamers that are out there want to just spend money and play games. Anyway, keep gaming fun. Have yourselves a great day. I've been your proud Canadian Phoenix Center Shadow. I'm signing off here. And I will catch you next time.